Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching Sit Down. Malia Baker here with us. Are you afraid of the dark? Coming to Nickelodeon. Malia, nice to meet you. How are you? Nice to meet you, too. Thank you for having me. I'm doing really well. What about you? I'm great. Listen, it's, uh, it's a crazy time out there with everything going on, but there's a lot of good stuff to watch. That's what's been keeping me going, and it's going to be awesome to see you and the rest of the gang doing this show. So what was it like to do this one? How was the experience overall? Oh, my gosh. The experience was so amazing. It was my first little taste or dip in the foot of the horror genre and I just loved working with everyone on the on the set including my castmates the showrunner JT who's also the writer the director Jeff Wallow um just overall this amazing experience has been such a great opportunity to grow and see other work that I can do what was most surprising about doing the horror genre most surprising is I thought it was going to be scarier on set. And although sometimes it would set the mood, I just remember the script supervisor reading all of the things that were, were supposed to happen, saying, whoosh, the door goes shut, boom, smash. Um, and I had to contain my laughter. But in the end, I think it all looks good. <laughs> you play Gabby in the show. So what are some things that you wanted to do with this part? What was most important for you in order to get that across on the screen? Yeah, for sure. I play Gabby. She is a smiley, sporty town sweetheart who is super over this town. Um, on the weekend, she even has a job so she can pay for college to get away from this town because she's so over it. Um, but I found that with Gabby, I really wanted to make her arc really clear. Um, at the beginning, she's very tight. She doesn't really want to have fun. Um, she's kind of like the mother of the group and she's just very rule oriented and by the end i think she finally lets loose and is able to be a kid and have some fun you've done some other parts where you've worked with adults before you get the opportunity to work with kids your own age and some a little bit older how nice was that you know what were some of the coolest parts of the experience it's my favorite thing honestly i think we have so many group chats that i think they're blowing up my phone right now <laughs> um it's every day that i've been talking to them and i love working with kids my own age because we're able to share and relate to so many things and with our shared love of acting we have even more things that we're able to be friends over so i really loved working with everyone that's really awesome to hear what specifically drew you to acting everybody has a little bit of a different story but what were you most inspired to do when you first got going here yeah, I feel like everyone, when they were a kid, had this some sort of dream of, I'm going to be on TV someday. So I decided to pursue that. <laughs> um, but my dad also works in the film industry, and hearing his stories about his set and how he climbed his way to almost the top, it was just very inspiring. And I've been watching movies pretty much forever. Um, Robin Williams is a huge inspiration of mine, and just seeing him live his life to the fullest and here I am now. I feel like I've done a pretty good job so far, hoping to progress in the future. I think you've done a great job so far. I'm, uh, I love Robin Williams. He, he was awesome with what he did. What were some of your favorite Robin Williams moments, movies, you know, comedy specials, anything like that? What stands out oh, to you? God, okay. Good Will Hunting. That's obviously kind of one go. of nice. my top choices. But Mrs. Doubtfire was my first introduction to him. And from there, everything that he's been in just has made my heart. I'm so happy. Mrs. Doubtfire is just an all-time great movie. And it's cool, too, because you're somebody who's a little bit younger than me. The fact that movies can live on through generations, like even a show like this, it just is really cool when that happens. I mean, how awesome is it for you to be immersed in movies and TV shows of the past and then also be doing your thing now? Seriously, yeah, it is such an honor, honestly. Um, I remember feeling a little bit of pressure because, you know, it's, are you afraid of the dark? That's a huge thing. Um, and then I remember hearing on set that we were the 100th episode of all of the Are You Afraid of the Dark series, um, which was even cooler to be able to present and represent to the world. Um, but I feel like it was really awesome because people that are watching the, sh the original series, the adults that watch the original series are able to pass this show down to their kids um, and have a nostalgic sense. So I'm very grateful to be able to have this opportunity and for it to be a shared timeless show. You mentioned your dad's experience in the industry and I think it's really important to have somebody who's been there, whether it's a parent or somebody else. What are some little things that you picked up from him that maybe you wouldn't have known if you didn't have him in your life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like the most amazing thing that I've learned from my dad is to stay warm on set. Hot pockets, <laughs> tons of jackets. We are both, we get so cold so easily. So I feel like that was the most important thing. Um, but one of my one of my previous sets, um, I remember this actor telling me, if you're not learning every, if you're not learning something every day, then maybe it's not worth continuing. Um, and so I just feel really grateful to be in a role in a position that I am still continuously learning every day. And I've loved it so far. 
I think that's a great mindset. What do you remember about the first set you were on? You know, it's, it's been a minute since you've been doing this thing, but you know, what are the early memories from like, okay, I'm actually doing this thing. I'm a professional now. Yeah. Um, funny enough, the first set that I was on, I was supposed to be an extra. So I didn't think I'd have to be super professional or super prepared because I had no lines. I was honestly just waving at someone. Um, but one of the girls got pink eye and they needed someone right there and then. And they chose me for some reason. They chose me out of the crowd and I got to say three lines and I thought it was going to be my big star breaking opportunity. It wasn't, but still I was very grateful for what I had accomplished on that day. That's really cool to hear. When you think about the industry, there are so many different places that are doing TV and movies right now. What's it like to be somebody immersed in this situation and trying to figure out, you know, where to go next? Yeah. Um, it's very Honestly, it's really amazing because as an actor, you're able to experience so many things. I know from Are You Afraid of the Dark, I finally learned what a 35 millimeter cam lens means, um, which is sounds super technical, but it's easier once you're on set. Um, but I think I've learned a lot in the small time frame that I have been doing acting and hoping to learn more in the future, uh, whether that's in the directing genre, the writing genre, the producing genre, and still in the acting genre. So yeah. I say go for it all. I think that would be great. <laughs> When people check out this show, what are a couple different things you want them to be thinking about? I mean, how should we be feeling when we're watching this at home? Yeah, I feel like people should remember the nostalgic sense from the 90s show, um, maybe introduce that original 90s show to their kids who are watching it too. Um, but remembering that although the show isn't relatable in some aspects, like fighting the shadow man and discovering an evil curse in your town, um, there are some also really relatable things and you're able to see yourself in at least one of the characters, which I really personally love um, to put myself in the shoes of the character that I relate to the most. So yeah. So Malia, I think it's pretty cool that you can be a role model for people going forward. They watch you on TV. They say, I want to be like Malia one day. Besides Robin Williams, who are some of the other people that you look to are like, you know what, I really like what this person's doing, or I would love to be like this person one day. For sure. And that's just crazy to think about. Um, someday someone looking at me the same way that I look to my idols, but Robin Williams, um, I've looked at Oprah for a very long time. Who else? Viola Davis. Who? Mm. <sighs> Will Smith, uh, the list could go on and on, honestly. Serge Ronan, Zendaya. I think that's where I need to stop myself, but <laughs> that's what I have so far. That's a good list. I like that list. Listen, being a teenager is already hard enough. I can't even imagine, you know, doing this on top of everything. So what don't we talk about enough when it comes to being an actor and also being a kid? Like, what, what do we need to really focus on a little bit more here? Yeah, I feel like with this generation, which I'm so honored to be a part of, um, I feel like activism is something that we can really focus on, uh, whether that's mental health, racial, and oh my God, English, please, um, <laughs> but racial problems, uh, injustices in all different sorts of areas. I feel like mental health as a teenager in this industry is one of the top priorities. Um, and yeah, I feel like that is where I'm focused on right now. I try to use my platform as much as I can to speak upon these things, hoping to continue to in the future. But I'm just grateful for opportunities like this to be able to share the message to as many voices that need to be heard. I think it's really cool because for somebody like me, who's a millennial, to look at Gen Z and we're just like, we're going to talk about mental health. We're going to talk about racial injustice. Like this was stuff that was happening much later in my life. Why do you think it's become such an important thing for your generation? Yeah, I feel like since we were exposed to social media at such a young age too, I know for me, I grew up on like the iPod touch and I was like, oh my God, this happened on TikTok. <laughs> um, but I feel like since we were exposed at such a young age, we were also exposed to the good aspects, but to the bad aspects as well. Um, and seeing that and growing up as a kid and as a teen going into the next lifetime, it is something that can be very scary. And we don't want that for our younger brothers and sisters to have to face. Um, but also just because we want to change for our own future, we want to step at the table so our voices can be heard. Um, and I feel like that's the most important thing that there is at heart for this generation. But I don't speak for us. Don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> no question about it. So you mentioned that this is a show from the 90s that people know Nickelodeon is an iconic brand. What were the shows that you were watching when you were a younger kid and you were like, you know, it'd be cool to be on Nickelodeon one day. What were some of the shows for you? Uh, I remember watching SpongeBob quite a lot, um, but I also remember watching Avatar, which I honestly am still obsessed with. Um, and iCarly. I think those were the three Nickelodeon shows that were at the top of my list all the time. 
And now we can add your show to the list. Malia, yes, we can. <laughs> that's what it's all about. Malia, really nice to meet you. Congrats on the success and best of luck with everything going forward, right? It was so nice meeting you. Thank you for having me.